everybody. Thanks for joining us here today. Today we are here for uh, Greg Rasami's presentation on combining simplify and clean for differing artistic effects. Hey, Greg. Hi, Nicole. Hi, everybody. Good morning. <laughs> All right, so let me tell you just a little bit about what this is going to be about today. When you combine Simplify and Clean together, they can create some really, really interesting effects. While Simplify is great for reducing uh, subtle detail and Clean can be great for skin cleaning and, and all these different more subtle effects, they're best known for their ability to turn your imagery into digital art. And Greg is an expert at combining both of them together to create really, really amazing artistic images. So I'm excited to see what he has for us today. Greg is our Topaz expert here, and he, if you've ever been to a photo show, you've probably seen him at, one, at the Topaz booth. And we are excited to have him back with us. So I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Greg just to go ahead and get started. Thanks, Greg. Thank you. And thank you so much, Nicole, for that wonderful presentation or the introduction. Um, the image that everybody can see on the screen right now is, uh, is a great example of mixing um, just about many of the different Topaz products together to create this final cartoon line drawing. I'm, I'm going to show you actually where that image started. Uh, this is a photograph from a um, uh, I think this is either Comic-Con or Anime Expo, I'm not exactly sure. But this guy's pretty famous for having uh, some amazing uh, Transformer costumes. And so uh, the first thing is you notice how I can use Topaz Simplify as a great way of creating line drawings from photographs. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, also uh, here at the final image, you can see how I'm using Topaz Adjust along with Topaz Simplify and even Topaz Clean all combined together to get that final image. So um, just about all of the images I'm about to show you right now, in some way or the other, have gone through uh, this particular workflow of uh, taking photographs and adjusting them maybe with Topaz Adjust, and then um, using Topaz Simplify to add lines to them, like the, one, the image you see over here. Uh, here's another good example that I use in the um, demonstrations all the time, where you take a photograph, and just this one is just purely Topaz Simplify alone. And here, once again, Topaz Simplify with a couple of the techniques I'm going to teach you today uh, in Photoshop that can create these other beautiful effects. So um, I use Simplify and Clean together all the time. Now, in this particular uh, webinar, we're going to concentrate on this image right here. And this image, uh, first here is one version of the image where I have put it through Topaz Clean to make it look like an illustration. And then here, by using, once again, a combination of Simplify and Clean to create that image. And this is the real image that we're going to focus on. But um, the techniques I'm going to teach you today can be used to create images like this, where you have some shading in your image along with the lines. And then, of course, you can actually combine the lines and the shading together to create this kind of a cartoon look. So let's get started. Here we go. Uh, right now, I'm going to be using, actually, Topaz. Uh, inside of Photoshop CS4, but you can use this in any version of Photoshop. And the original photograph is the one you see right here. Uh, this is from a catalog for Halloween costumes, so <clears throat> that's where I got this photograph from. And so the next thing that I want to do is, you notice that I made a duplicate of it. The only difference that I made in a duplicate was I took the, the, uh, the thing that she has in her hand, the, the duster, and I used just a little bit of a um, levels on it to try to bring up the details on that. And you'll see why that's important in a moment. So once you've got your image that you're going to work with, usually I make a couple of copies of it. So you notice here in Photoshop I have made two copies of that layer. Next, uh, we'll start off with uh, Topaz's Clean because we're going to use clean in areas that are predominantly the face area to create these line drawings. Now, uh, I had done this already before, so let me actually reset it so you can see step by step what I go through when I am in Topaz Clean. Usually, I zoom in to the area uh, that's most important in the image, and that's going to be the face. And I uh, always start from the top because all the Topaz filters are designed to work from top to bottom. So from clean, under strength, I just boost that up a little bit, and immediately I can see how it's taking all the texture and it's trying to smooth it out. 
Uh, usually, I will take the radius and I'll bring it all the way down to the minimum. In this case, that's four, uh, mainly because that preserves the most amount of color in the photo. Now, in this case, I already know that we're going to be creating a black and white version of this, so the color is not going to be as important. But that's just a habit of mine. I always bring the radius to zero or the minimum. Uh, under the edges, I accent the edges usually to a level of two. And what that's going to do is going to take whatever kind of lines that we have on our image, and it's going to really try to uh, continue the line or smooth out the line, which gives you this really wonderful edge effect uh, on any of the edges that you might have in the photograph. Um, and finally, for the sharpness, uh, I usually boost up the sharpness just a little bit to get more details here from the hair or from the eyes. Um, and at this point, I'm actually pretty okay with it. I'm happy with it. I'm also going to take a look at um, her legs because the lines on the legs here are pretty important. And I can see some of the, the sharpening artifacts that are going on here, but that's okay. I'm going to leave that alone because later on we'll come back and show you how we're going to fix that. So right after that particular step, I hit OK. And now you're going to see how just that one step alone has transformed the image from what used to look like a photograph to something that looks like a little bit more of an illustration. Now since we want to create a black and white version of this immediately, um, under image, you want to go under the adjustment of black and white. And uh, my favorite preset under black and white is actually the green filter. Um, for some reason, the green filter always gives me <clears throat> a nice balance between the areas that are like the facial tones and everything else. And at this point, usually I just hit OK. And then, since I know I want to create a, a line drawing from this, I want her face and her skin tones to pretty much turn into a white. So at this point, uh, I bring up my levels control. So under adjustment, you want to go under levels. And uh, let's boost up the whites, because we want to make her face become as white as possible. Now you notice as I boost up the whites, what a great effect that has. Now at the same time as I boost up the whites, I want to bring back the blacks. So we want to create a really nice contrast here for her eyes, her hair. We want to have a little bit of shading going on in her hair and her eyes and her lips. But we really want to accentuate her uh, eyebrows and her eyes and her nose and her lips. Now, uh, in this case, I can see that as the more and more, if I was to bring up the whites even further, you'll soon see that her lips begin to disappear. And that's why, by using the middle uh, slider and levels, this is a great way of either taking away detail from it or accentuating the details that might be in the midtones. So just by playing with these three different levels under the, the levels control, you can very easily create that exact whitening of the skin that we want to do that leaves the details of the face and the hair alone. So once I'm satisfied with that, I hit OK. So now this is the level that we're very happy with, that we know that both the lines that are on her face as well as the lines that are on her legs um, look great. These are exactly the lines that we want. Now unfortunately, you probably noticed that what's lacking in this image are the lines that would make up her arms, her body, the details that she has in her skirt. So we need to create a line drawing for all of those. And that's when we're going to now take that layer that we had before, which is uh, the original photograph layer. I'm going to duplicate it one more time. And this time, to get the lines, we're going to use Topaz Simplify. So under Filter, let's pull down to Topaz Simplify. All right, now again, I've done this from before, so let me reset it so I can take you step by step through the process. Now first, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on the face and show you that um, if you were to start Topaz Simplify by trying to find edges, the first thing you want to do is under Mode, change the output to be just edges alone. Now, uh, under the Edges tab, I always change the edge type to be Mono Line Fine, because I always like having my lines of a constant um, thickness at this point. So I just now just boost it up, and immediately I can see how the lines have been introduced onto our photograph. Now, unfortunately, um, you're going to notice that the face is going to look pretty bad, because the computer is doing edge detection, and when the computer finds the edges that are around the eyes or the lips, nobody really would draw a face like this, you know, because a, a person drawing a character isn't going to necessarily, it's not going to find lines or edges. But we do notice that the lines that are coming in around the arms and the rest of the body actually are pretty good. 
which is exactly the lines that we're interested in. We really want those lines. So <clears throat> for the first step, what I'm going to try to do is to get the lines that I really, really want and some of the more subtle lines we want to get rid of. And Topaz uh, Simplify has a really wonderful tool set to help you do that. Um, usually I take the edge strength pretty far up. You can see that right now it's pretty close to the end. And then I take the uh, reduce weak and I boost that up and immediately I see some of the lines that were unnecessary start to disappear, which is exactly what I want. Right now at this step, what I want to do is cr basically create the lines. Let me get the edge strength up higher. I really like the lines here, the lines around the arms, uh, the lines that she has basically around the main features and the details of her dress are really, really coming through. So uh, I can see a little bit of a problem here with her collar. I'm going to leave that alone for right now because in a moment you're going to see how we're going to fix that as well. So once I'm satisfied with the basic lines, the way the Topaz is founded, I'm going to hit OK. <clears throat> All right. So <coughs> um, these lines look great. Unfortunately, the problem that we have right now is we're missing a lot of the lines that would normally be drawn by an artist for the wrinkles that are around her arms here, around the little puffs that she has around her arms. And also some of the more subtle details that she might have around her skirt that normally an artist would actually draw in as well. So uh, one of the biggest recommendations that I can have for you is don't ever settle with what Topaz Simplify is going to do with only one layer. Always take whatever original layer you were working with, so here is again our original image, duplicate it one more time, but this time now you're going to pursue the lines and the details around the more subtle areas because we want to create a combination of the best of both worlds. So under filter, again we pull down to Topaz Simplify. Okay, let's zoom in uh, so we can see exactly what's going on. Now all the settings from the previous time are still here which is really great. But now we're going to take the reduce weak and ease back off on it. And now you're going to see how the lines that were around the little poofs on the arms come in. And these are really wonderful. These are exactly the lines that we wanted. Uh, we can use a, a little bit of the simplify edges. We're going to pull back down as that as well. So now that starts introducing even more and more and more lines that come into the image. Now unfortunately at the same time as we start introducing all these extra lines, uh, there is all this extra garbage that appears around the character that we don't want. So remember, we really are going to use the best of both worlds over here. So let's use uh, a little bit of the reduce small. That looks good. Let's take the edge strength up a bit so it's going to make those lines become even darker. And uh, I'm pretty happy with this right now, so let's go ahead and hit OK on that too. Okay, I'm hit OK. All right. So now you'll notice that we got two images with lines. We have one image where the lines are very simple uh, and they outline the character very well. And we have another image where the lines are outlining more of the subtle details. So now to be able to combine these images together, it's just a simple matter of erasing from one layer to the other. Now you'll notice these layers currently are on top of one another here in the lower right hand corner of the layer section of Photoshop. Just grab your eraser tool and uh, start slowly erasing that in. Now, you're welcome to actually at this point use um, layer masks, if you like, which is um, something that I really, really recommend you do. So you can always just add a layer mask into there and grab a brush. So let's say I want that brush to be uh, a black brush. Okay, let me exchange that here. So now what's nice about using it with layer masks is now you're going to have very exact control that you can then basically take back whatever you didn't want from the other the first one. Uh, let me also make sure that the opacity here is all the way, so as I'm brushing that in, I'm going to get exactly all the lines that I wanted. Let's bring some of the lines in here for her uh, skirt, and uh, some of the lines that are here at the edge of the skirt as well. That looks pretty good. And uh, if there's ever times that the lines are too much, you can always, like for example, I could see as I zoom into here that these lines here are unnecessary. I can always just uh, exchange my brush, and you can see that white now became my brush, and I'll make my brush a little smaller. And I can just basically paint those out, you know. And I can go back around here and find other areas where I think uh, the lines are too much over here. Definitely the wrists. We got a little too many lines in there, so let's get those, get rid of those, and then here on the shoulders, let's get rid of those too. And uh, oh, right, let's get, get a little bit of those over here too. Okay, that looks good. 
and some of these lines too. Okay. All right. That looks good. Okay. So once we've got the lines the way that we like it right now, I can take these two layers and merge them together. So just by shift selecting both of those two layers together, I'm going to Command E or Control E on the PC. So now both those layers have become one. And we can see how some of the lines that were around the poofs on the arms might not be as dark. So at this point, usually I'll take this particular layer here and uh, I'll just bring up the levels control on it. Usually I use keyboard shortcuts for all of this, like Command L or Control L, but I'm going to go ahead and do a pull down so you can see what's going on. Uh, and we'll take the black levels here and really, really, really boost that up. So now it's going to take all of these subtle lines that we had, who are kind of grayish, and it's going to make those be uh, considerably darker, which is really what we want. We want to get more and more lines uh, that are going to be darker. Now, uh, once we're done with this step, the only problem that I can see with this image right now is first, the image has a problem with the face, and then the other problem that I can see is with the legs. Uh, and finally, as we zoom in, we realize that Topaz Adjust, pardon me, um, Topaz Simplify is creating these aliased lines. You can see that they basically don't have any anti-aliasing. Um, one of the best secrets that I can pass on to you as far as combining, simplifying, clean together, is take your lined image, and then you're going to topaz clean that lined image. And watch what happens. Okay, let's go ahead and zoom in. Immediately, I think you're seeing what's going on, right? Uh, as we look at these edges, and I'll zoom in even further so you can see that really, really well, you can see that in the original, these edges uh, are all aliased, so they all have that stair-stepping artifact, whereas topaz clean has a wonderful way of smoothing these lines out. As a matter of fact, uh, Topaz Clean will find any kind of discontinuities that are in lines and will smooth them as well. And by changing under the edges control, the radius, okay, that's going to dictate how well Topaz Clean is going to take some of these discontinuities and just smooth them out. And it gives you this really beautiful inked line effect, which is nice and dark, like a deep line. Um, if you ever see that there are these little outlines that are happening because of the sharpening, okay, I'll show you in a moment how we're going to get rid of that too. So let's go ahead and hit OK. So we'll process that. There we go. And you can immediately see what a difference that made, going from something that was very alias to something that looks like where the lines are nicely defined. So finally, at this point, um, if I see that there's any kind of like sharpening uh, problems, or sharpening artifacts, usually at this point I'll bring up the levels control again, so just Command L, and I'll take the white levels and just boost that up. So it's going to take any of those little tiny uh, dots or noise that was around the lines and I'll just boost that up. Okay, that looks great. I'm going to go ahead and stay with that. Okay, let me uh, kind of go around the image and see if I'm satisfied with the way that the image is turning out right now. And it's actually turning out really, really good. So now uh, we're at a phase where we've got the general lines of our character looking right. And we also know that previously in the beginning, we had the face and everything else looking right as well. So now it's time to combine both of them together. So I'm going to take the layer that, had, that we did from Topaz Clean, put that underneath the layer that we had with the lines. So here's the line. The, the clean version. Here are the lines. And let's go ahead and turn on a layer mask for that and start using the brush to bring in the areas that we want. So let me make my brush a little bit bigger and we uh, are just going to start drawing that in. So here's where the image really starts coming together. And so now you're beginning to see that um, I really am using basically the best of both worlds. Um, the face is looking really good. Okay, I can see that some of the lines over here are okay. Now at this point, it's always fun to experiment. You can go into seeing if the lines for the hair are going to work. Now you see how I kind of like bled into her shoulder there a little bit. But that's easy because I can just exchange the color and on my layer mask I can just paint with white. So I'll go ahead and just paint that out. So it's really cool here because uh, by even making your brush become solid, you can get exactly the effect you want. So let me exchange. Okay, and my brush. And just kind of like draw that in, which is really, really nice. So you can see how again it's just truly the best of both worlds. We're getting the lines that we had from 
uh, what we did in Topaz Simplify, but we're also getting the face being correct as well. Now, as I go back down, her legs have a major problem. So that's why now I'm going to make the brush really, really, really thick and just bring that in. And you notice that this is all coming in from the layer that we had that was for the, uh, the clean version. So now all the lines are correct because all those lines were truly from the original photograph. Okay. At the same time, though, I'm going to take the outlines for the shoes and leave that alone because I actually like the shoes being in this kind of an outline-like format. Okay. If I ever see that there's little areas over here, for example, where the uh, the gray or the the gray shades are coming in, it's always easy to be able to just put a marquee around those areas, like this. And um, let me do that actually in the layer that was right here. Okay. And I can always just bring up the levels in that case and take my whites and boost that up. Okay, so now you'll see how some of those little areas, the, the grays will disappear. That's a fun little trick you could use. And there's a lot of other ways of doing that, but that's just a quick trick that will help me do that. All right. Okay, so now you can see that the resulting image, let me zoom out of that right now, is looking awesome. You know, that, that we're getting uh, a combination of all those kinds of effects coming together. Um, I, you know what, when I boosted that up, I can see a line between the two of them. So let me actually undo that particular step. So we'll just go back to fix that up later on if we wanted to. All right. So the last thing that I usually like to do is that this is the layer that we have now where uh, we're pretty happy with the line drawing that we created. That we've created uh, an area for the face that's going to look correct. We've got the lines that are on the body that look pretty good. The last thing that I always like to finish up with is by adding some texture both to the paper as well as texture to the lines themselves. So here's the way I do that. First, I'll take the general image. Um, in fact, at this point, I am going to actually merge these two layers together just so that they now become only one layer. Uh, shift select them, Command E, so now that becomes one. And then, <clears throat> first, let's uh, take the levels control and in general, I'm going to just boost up the whites just a little bit more. And in this case, we're going to, again, try to get rid of any kind of gray scale that might be in the photograph. Just a little bit is all we need. All right. And um, let's now add a little bit of texture to it. Actually, you know what? Did I? Yeah, I got the hair a little bit, but that's okay. We'll come back to that. <laughs> all right. So last step, let's add some texture to the paper. I loaded a photograph of paper that I always like to use before, and this is kind of like a uh, an old paper that's got you know little scruff marks on it, and it's just uh, kind of like a textured paper. I'm going to select all, copy, and we'll go back to the original image that we had. I'm going to just paste that in. Okay. So as I zoom out, I can see that picture, my that photograph uh, isn't as large as my original. I take that layer and put it into the background, and then another big tip is take the lines level that you have and make the mode be multiply. Okay, so now you can see how that those lines are being overlaid on top of my image. Uh, let's take the layer with the, uh, the paper texture and I'm going to scale that up just so that we get a nice photo paper texture there. There we go. Let's make that be like right about there. should be good. Yeah, now what's nice about playing with these paper textures is you can basically put these little scruff marks or whatever else you want anywhere you want. Now, now in this case, uh, when I commit to that change, the, the paper being that yellowish kind of color isn't really what I'm going after. So let's make this be more monochromatic. Um, so under the image adjustments, let's just desaturate that. You desaturate that layer. There we go. And again, I can always go back to the levels and just take that paper texture and make it a little bit brighter. And let's take the mid-tones and make those be a little brighter too. There we go. So all we're trying to do is just add a little touch of texture to the actual paper in the background. So as I zoom in, you can see that the paper is no longer uh, just a plain white. There's some dings and things that are going on in there. You know? And then finally, to add texture to the actual white or the lines itself, um, here's what I recommend. First, create a new layer. That layer is going to be above the layer that you had for the lines. Now, if somebody was doing a, a pencil sketch, their lines would never be this continuous. 
there would always be some level of texture that's going to give you the paper that's going to just make the incontinuousness in or like discontinuities in the lines. So uh, in that layer, first fill that layer in with black. Make sure that that layer is in screen mode. So screen is going to take whatever image is there and it's going to add it to the uh, images, the layers that are below it. So in this case, because that layer is black, it's adding nothing to the layers behind it. In that layer, add some noise. So under filter, we'll add a noise, add noise. And now immediately, you start seeing the effect happening. Okay? You can see that because of that noise that we just added in, the lines were no longer continuous. In fact, here's a quick preview. Here's what they used to look like, and here's what they look like now, where the lines have become a little discontinuous as they're being added into the image. Now, uh, in this case, the actual noise pattern is only a single pixel big. So I'm going to be OK with the way that this looks right now. Let's hit OK. But then at this point, usually I'll take that noise layer, and I will just blur it very, very slightly. So just go right under Gaussian Blur. And it said that's a little too much there, so let's just ease back off almost to 0.4. I mean, a uh, very subtle, subtle amount of blur here. OK. Uh, let me again give you a little before and after what that's going to look like. This is what the lines look like without it. This is the way the lines look now. And at any time, if you want more contrast from this discontinuity, you can always bring up the levels control and just really, really make that more and more uh, discontinuous like this. Okay, let's do it right about there. Should be good. Okay, cool. All right. Now, the, the only problem that we have right now is that this particular noise is being added into uh, all the other layers that are there as well, Where, whereas we only want this noise layer to be added just into the level that we have here with her. Um, usually under opacity, I'll play with that just a little bit more so I can just add just a little bit of texture just in the areas that I want. You know, there we go. It's very, very subtle. Okay, not too much. And I will combine these layers together. So let's command E on that. And I think we're almost done. Let's turn on this final layer over here under multiply. Let's may change the mode of that to multiply. And uh, yeah, you know what? There's one last step left. Uh, the lines would never really be this dark on a pencil sketch. So I always take the layer, which is being multiplied, on top of our paper texture. And I'll just turn down the opacity of it just a little bit, just like this. You know, so uh, it's going to create a little bit more of a paper texture feel to it than instead of having the lines just be so, so dark. You know. And that's it. And that's a, um, a simple walkthrough through usually what I do to combine the best of both Simplify and also uh, Topaz Clean. Thank you so much. That is, those are quite a few steps, and you get a really awesome result. Very cool. Thanks for sharing it with us. Sure. Okay, so the first question, Greg, is coming from Barbara. She would like for you to recover a combination of the lines with the image when you brought back the face of your subject. And okay. she says you, she thinks you changed the order of some layers, but she's not sure. So she wanted to see that again. If you mm -hmm. could go a little bit slower and kind of sure, cover sure, that. no problem. Let me um, let me go ahead and undo um, all these little things that we've done here in the past. So we'll, we'll go back to hopefully retrieving uh, the way that we had these layers before. Um, let's take a look. I think. Let's see how many steps I can go backwards. <laughs> until we get to the point. There we go. I think that's that's the one right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. It's it's over here right now. Let me see if I can go go back one more step. Okay. No, that's it. That's that's the end of my undos. <laughs> uh, basically, you're you're seeing it here right now. You know, essentially, uh, what we have is we have a layer. Uh, let me turn off my layer mask so you can see what it looks like. We have a layer which represents what we have done in Topaz Simplify, which is just purely lines. And again, these lines are really, really great for just capturing all the contours. And we also have a layer that we had done using Topaz Clean. 
So in clean, we've got the uh, face beautifully done, the hair is done right, and you can see that the lines are currently above right here, the layer clean. So at this point, I used uh, a layer mask to basically paint in the areas that I wanted, so I got rid of the problems that we had with the face and uh, the same the problems here with the legs, and we replaced that with what we had from the other layer underneath it. Uh, just by basically rubbing it through from one layer to the other. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> okay, let's see here. Oh, I'm s oh, could you show the original image uh, again to just contract with the finished product? Sure. Thanks. Right. Uh, as far as the the finished version that I had, I mean, this is this is a good example of um, what happens when you know I spend a little time doing that, and then basically this is the way the image started. Well, let me make that full screen here for you so you can see that better. Okay. Okay. Wow. Well, okay. There it is. <laughs> Takes a little bit of time. Start that off. There we go. Okay. So that's what it used to look like, and that's what it looks like now. And and it's by the way, it's easy to take um, just the the shading that's in the original photograph and introduce that into the painting as well. Um, like in this case, what I've done is just taken the dark you know um, skirt that she has, and I made it a little bit more gray, and I also introduced some of these. Uh, hatched patterns across it. So it looks like an artist actually sketched that in and added that into it too. So um, at, at this point, I'll, I'll either decide to stay with it just the way that the lines are, or I'll just add in some shading by rubbing that through as well. So that's essentially, this is the before, and that's the after. OK, great. Dennis has a great question. He says, other than anti aliasing the lines which you showed, what does clean yes. do that simplify doesn't? He says he uses simplify all the time but doesn't really use clean. So if you could kind of Okay, sure. Um, one of the things about clean, um, let me actually turn that off here just so you can see it, and simplify. Um, simplify is a combination of actually two technologies. Um, sim the, the first part of simplify uh, are called uh, morphological operators. They're called scale space operators in image processing. Essentially, Simplify is great at taking small details and allowing you, actually details of any size, and allowing you to erase them from a photograph. And it creates this very painterly kind of an effect by doing that. Whereas in contrast, when you're using uh, Clean, Clean is very different in that um, Simplify would take features in a photograph, like let's say the pupils of the eyes or even the eyes themselves, and would eliminate them, eliminate them from a photograph if you were trying to uh, clean that up. Because it's looking at everything based on the size of that feature. Whereas in contrast, clean is not doing that. What clean is doing is it's trying to smooth out features that are already there. So it's not going to remove features from your image. It's just attempting to smooth everything out. And that smoothing process is essentially what leads to um, you know, what you see over here. Let me zoom in on that here so you can see that better. You know, just where everything is being really, really smoothed out. I hope that answers your question. But that's the main primary difference. And then the other thing that um, Simplify has built into it is also the technology of edge detection. So it gives you um, fundamentally like four different edge detection technologies. And it also gives you all these tools in being able to really tune that edge detection so you can, you can get a nice balance between the best of all worlds. OK, great. I think that definitely explains some there. Um, I have quite a few requests for a different type of, would you be able to just play around with a landscape image, or do you have one available? Sure, okay. sure absolutely. And kind yeah, of show yeah, if it's a, yeah. a different yeah. workflow that you might use? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'll show you what I do with landscape images. This is. Um, a photo that I always um, show off actually at um, the conventions that I do, but it uh, starts out with basically this photograph over here, um, and what I want to be able to do is to convert this into a painting. And you're going to notice that I'm going to do this entire process right inside of iPhoto. I, I don't even need to you know, jump into Photoshop to do this. But first, there's the photo. And let's uh, jump into Topaz's Simplify. Actually, pardon me, Adjust right off the bat. Let's use a, a little Adjust. And uh, I'm still on this 
computer using the Adjust 4. Uh, Adjust 5 is coming around the corner, folks. I'm very excited, so we'll show you that later on. But uh, for today, let's, let's stick with Adjust 4. Uh, I'll click on the Vibrance preset. Now, the problem with this photograph, by the way, is that the photograph originally was taken in an overcast day. That's why everything looks very grayish, you know, so there's really no colors that are coming through. And because it is overcast, the atmosphere is obstructing our view from the clouds and uh, the details of the hills. Whereas Topaz is really amazing at being able to bring some of these details out. So uh, just in Topaz Adjust, I'm going to take some of the details and I'll accentuate it. So I'll get even more and more details coming out of the clouds. And as we look at the hillside, originally where there was a lack of color and contrast, now we've got some beautiful colors. And because I want to make this look like a painting, I'll take the saturation boost and I'll boost that up. There we go. That's considerably better. Now if I was to hit OK at the step, you'll notice that we've done a great job of bringing some color into the photograph, but it does not look like a painting. So now, uh, let's use a little Topaz Simplify. So let's double click on Topaz Simplify. And uh, probably one of my favorite presets in Topaz Simplify is Buzz Sim. And all it takes is one click. And we're already done. Let me zoom in just to show you what happened. Uh, this is what the photograph used to look like. And you can see that now, uh, Topaz Simplify is doing a great job, I'll zoom in even further, of how it's taking all these details along the hillside. And it's making it look like a painter actually went in here and applied paint strokes. Um, with, at the same time, you'll notice that it's maintaining the shapes so that the birds, the details in the birds are disappearing, but the general shape of the birds is staying beautifully there. You know? And of course the clouds, they, um, again, are getting rid of some of the details that are in the clouds, but the general shape and the painting style is happening. So now I'll hit OK in this step. Now notice that all I did right now is just click Buzz Sim. Now, usually at this point, the last thing that I like to do with any kind of a landscape image is if I really, really want to make it look like a painting, I'll finish it off with a little topaz detail. And I'll show you why. Um, if you zoom in on a painting, on, on a real painting, what would happen is for every brush stroke, there would be some thickness there. And you actually can almost feel the texture of the paint sticking up from the surface. Whereas right now, we don't have that. What it feels like is that all the paint here looks really, really, really flat. So um, Topaz Detail is a great way of bringing that out. Just take small detail and boost that up. Watch what happens. There it is. And this is really, really awesome. It's probably one of my favorite things to do at the end. So it takes a, a canvas that was very, very flat, and it just punches up all these little details. So I'll go ahead and hit OK on that. And uh, there we go. We're done. So I'll give you a, a little before and after so you can see where we started and where we are now. So essentially, this is the photograph that we started from. And this is where we are now. Yes, very cool. Thank you for showing that. Lots of people were wondering about that. All yeah. right. Richard asks about your uh, background that you created for the paper background. There are yes. actually another question about that. Number one, do you have a place where you download backgrounds like that that you always go to? And number two, if you can go through that process of how you created it again. Um, yeah, usually um, just, you know, um, one of the ways of doing it is just finding paper um, that's dirty around you and scanning it. That's one way of doing it. Um, the other way of doing it is typing the word paper into Google and then seeing some of the you know, royalty-free images of paper that are hanging around that you're welcome to pick up and use and just uh, copying and pasting that into your work. Um, you can definitely purchase paper texture from stock photography sites, but there's a, a lot of people that have been generous enough to just give away uh, scans of paper textures that are out there as well. So um, just when you find a paper texture that you like, uh, the way that it works is you'll notice that this is the image right here. Let me actually uh, show that to you. That's, that's what it looks like by default. I did a select all, which is Command A or Control A on the PC, and a copy. Then I switched over to the image that I was working with, which is the image over here, and uh, just simply did a paste. You know? So now you'll notice that there is another layer hanging out back here, which is uh, um, this photograph of the paper. And now um, the way that I applied them together was first 
um, I took those two layers and I merged them together. And I take the layer that we had with the, oops, let me actually undo that because uh, I have turned off the area that we had with the face. Let's bring that back in. There we go. Now I can merge these together. Okay. So, so now just take, make sure that the layer with the lines, you want to change the mode to be multiply. Okay. So multiply is great for taking line art and basically superimposing it on top of whatever you have in the background. Now, since the image in the background is not the right size, uh, usually what I do at this point is, oops, let me undo that, sorry. Uh, usually what I do at this point is I'll use a transform, just Command T or Control T on the PC. There we go, and I just change the size of it. And once I'm done, I hit the Enter key. And at this point, you're welcome to change that paper to be black and white or any other color you like. And that's basically how I made the paper texture. The, the real secret here is just make sure that the the layer that has the lines is not kept at normal. Uh, change the mode to be multiply. And that's what does the superimpose. All right. A couple questions about the noise that you added in this workflow. Mark says mm -hmm. that you had a black layer in screen mode that you added noise and then blurred. What did you need to do to get to the multiply, multiply mode at the end? And then also another question about how to not have noise in part, parts of areas and then have noise in other parts. That's pretty easy to do because um, if there is, let me, let me first of all just quickly do that here for you. Uh, I'm going to take a new layer, create a new layer, okay? Uh, make sure that that layer is filled with black. So I'm just going to uh, command backspace or command delete on the keyboard. Uh, it's control backspace on, on the PC that does that. So that makes it black. Make sure you change that to be screen. Okay, so now it's taking that layer there. Usually, by the way, I will actually rename that layer. And I'll call it noise, but in this case, I didn't. Um, and then at that point, you're going to add noise into that layer. Okay, and you'll see that immediately appear. Say it OK. <coughs> and uh, right now, the only problem that we have is that it's adding that noise to all the other layers that are below it as well. Now, I'm not going to go through all the finessing of it. I'm just going to actually leave it the way that it is right now so that I can explain exactly what you wanted to see. Now, let's say, for example, the noise that's being added in around the face is too much. and You don't want that. You can always just grab your brush, okay, make sure your brush is black, all right, and just basically paint that in. Now, you can also, uh, let me undo that, you can make your brush be not so uh, opaque, just bring the opacity of your brush down and just kind of like lightly paint that out so that you're going to have a little bit of noise in there, but not so much, you know, just like this. Now, at this point, um, you're going to take these two layers that are there. Let me actually turn off all the other layers that we have here as well, just so you can see them just combined together. Let's do a little before and after on that. So as far as the continuation of the lines, you see that the lines right now seem very computery and artificial, where they're just pretty solid. Whereas when we add that level of noise to it, it's almost like as the pencil was moving across the paper, the paper has some texture, so it's stopping the line from being so constant. You know, and that's really the effect that I'm trying to create. Whereas in contrast, it just looks like the computer was to draw it, you know. And at this point, you can just take these two layers right now and then combine them together with a command E. And now, when you combine that actually with the paper texture below it, once again, take that level right now, that, that layer I should say, that has the line art on it and make sure you change the mode to be multiplied. There you go. That's done. OK, great. At the beginning of the webinar, you were talking about how to make the race car image um, look like it had more line drawing or hand drawn as opposed to computer generated. Is this the technique you were talking no. about with the noise? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, that, that's one of the, in fact, let me bring up that image here for you just so you can see uh, what it looks like. Uh, yeah, what's, what's going on here is, um, again, a combination of these different techniques. Uh, one of the things you've got to keep in mind whenever you look at a uh, sketch is that a, the lines that are in a sketch are never going to be as black as black. In fact, um, you'd be surprised at how gray actually lines in a sketch are. So I think that's probably one of the biggest secrets of making a sketch look like a sketch is... Uh, don't make your lines so black, you know. Uh, making them subtle usually does the job. 
And then, then uh, of course, uh, the other things that I like to do with it is sometimes I'll take the layer that has the lines in it and I'll offset it around um, and I will make it blue, uh, kind of like a cyan color. Um, if you're an artist, you're probably familiar with uh, and this old technique of sketching out in cyan first and then um, you outline with black on the top of it, which so when you photocopy um, that artwork, it looks, uh, the photocopy does not see the cyan color. It only sees the black lines. Hence, you get this much better representation of your blacks. And in this case, I'm kind of like simulating what an artist would do by creating the cyan image there as well as the, the black lines. But uh, the image that you see right now on the screen is exactly all the different techniques we talked about where um, the lines don't have a continu continuity to it. There's like a little bit of a breakup with the noise that's there. Um, and uh, also this has been down rest, so if you were to see the original image, it will give you a better idea of what it all looks like. Nice. I think that is about it, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. I Thank you so much, Greg. Everybody really enjoyed it, and to see. Oh, thank you. Yeah, to kind of see how you are using all the products together. I got a lot of comments about people enjoying to see or seeing the way you think and <laughs> the way that you're using right, all the products right. together. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was hoping that that's what would come across is that people would see the utility in combining these different ideas together. Yeah. Well, it definitely did. Thank you so much, and thanks, everybody, for Thank joining you. us from wherever, from all over the world. Have a great week. Bye-bye.